You're listening to the Gutsy Podcast, where we talk about all things real, raw, and ridiculous about running a business authentically. Whether you need an inspirational pick me up or a swift kick in the mental ass, the Gutsy Podcast is your bi weekly guide to getting out of your head and back into action. I'm Laura Ora, branding and mindset coach for female entrepreneurs. CEO of Works and Co. and your host on this journey through entrepreneurship. It's time to fuel your gutsy. Each phase of a woman's life varies so much from the previous. Our roles and responsibilities change, our purpose expands, our bodies shift. And yet the very things that give us so many options often end up being the same things that can weigh you down. Of course, unless you shift your perspective. Today, we're talking with Jennifer Arthurton about creating a kick-ass next chapter while honoring the one that you're in. Jennifer is the creator and founder of Old Chicks No Shit. Ah, one of the best names I've ever heard. A platform and podcast designed to inspire and support midlife women in chasing their dreams and creating their kick-ass next chapter. Jennifer is an empowerment coach, podcast host, writer, and speaker. Having made her midlife course corrections, she is passionate about the inherent power and knowledge that women possess at a time when they often feel overlooked and doubt themselves the most. I first want to say, what a cool way to round out the year. This was super unintentional, but to have this great conversation with Jennifer about creating your kick-ass next chapter, falling at the end of a calendar year as we go into a new one, I, is just pure alignment. The last episode to air in 2022 is going to be this Thursday's Power Back, which is going to get into that mindset of, but I've always you know, that one that keeps you in the hamster wheel that you are so desperately trying to get your ass out of. Look, I know what that feels like. I know that push and pull that I can see it. I can feel it. I'm trying. I'm doing all the right things. Things aren't moving and I feel depleted, exhausted, and uninspired. I want you to know that that's not how you are intended to live, that you do have another option. And I know it may not feel like that right now, And sometimes it feels like an uphill battle, like you're climbing every single day. But my friend, you are made for so much more. In fact, you know that. You're likely nodding your head and maybe the hair on your arms is standing up. You have a beautiful, deep connection. And it's not about if you can do the things that you see and feel, but rather allowing yourself to. I was talking with a good friend the other day and I was like, look, we can take all of these tests and quizzes, these very valuable tools like human design, astrology, personality quizzes, hell, even those quizzes online that tell you what Disney princess you are or what flavor fucking pizza you are. The thing that I want you to hear and know the most is all of those things are simply reflecting back to you what you already know. And certainly, if you go down the rabbit hole of any of that, there's always an opportunity to learn. We are living, breathing creatures that are conditioned to learn. But at the end of the day, it's what you do with that information. Are you willing to allow yourself to be what all of those things are telling you? This is not about becoming something, about doing something, about forcing something. Like there's so much masculine energy behind all that. What I am saying to you is that all of these things that you desire, the success, the peace of mind, the ability to travel, the flexibility in your life and your business, the happiness, the body that you want. I mean, insert whatever it is that you are searching for in this life. It is not about doing more shit, but rather going inward and allowing yourself to be who you innately were born to be. My goal and role in your life is to guide you back to your own version of alignment, to start saying yes to yourself so that you feel grounded, connected, and expansive in your own fucking way, not in the way that everyone else is doing it. From now until December 16th, you can book an alignment session. Look, if you want to get in, you want to get down and dirty, you want clear, direct answers like now, alignment sessions are magic because in 90 minutes together, you would be absolutely mind blown at the clarity, the reconnection with yourself and your desire, and the grounded, practical next steps for you to take that we can discover. 
So if this is making your booty hole tingle or you are just simply fucking intrigued, go to lauraora.com. You can directly sign up for an alignment session. The discount is already activated, so no need for any fucking codes to implement. And if you're still like, ah, oh, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm maybe book a discovery call. Let's chat it out. Let me hear what's going on in your mind and we'll take it from there. All right, my friends, today we're talking about getting into your kick-ass next chapter, and Jennifer has a wealth full of knowledge to share with you, so let's get into it. I can't wait to have this conversation with you. Jennifer, welcome to the Gutsy Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about your journey. I love your story, and you know, talk to me about like this course correction, like so many beautiful yeah. things happening. Yeah, so I um, had a very long career in the corporate world, in corporate marketing for a large global company, um, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I did all the things I was supposed to do in my life, you know, go, <laughs> go to a good co- school, get good grades, go to a good college, get a good job, work your way up the ranks. And, you know, along the process of time, you know, there would be this little voice that would be niggling in the back of my brain going, is this it? Is this like all there is? And, you know, I had reached the pinnacle of my career um, and still I had this kind of nagging dissatisfaction, Um, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. And as busy people do, I just pushed it aside and continued continuing on because that's all I knew. And then in the year leading up to my 50th birthday, um, I found myself uh, divorced, unemployed, um, an empty nester. So my daughter moved away to school three hours away and um, I was bedridden with a stress related illness. And so, you know, (laughs) that niggling little voice about is that it was kind of like, okay, now I really, really have to answer the question. Like, what is it? that I want. And more importantly, who am I? Because all of the roles and responsibilities that I had in life, I thought defined me. So I was a wife, I was a mother, I was a corporate executive. Um, I was also a huge gym goer at the time, um, like really into fitness. And none of that was available to me anymore. And so I had to really sit and ask myself some very difficult questions about who actually I was. If I wasn't those things, who was I? Right. And, you know, it was really kind of scary because Um, I felt like I was kind of shouting into the abyss, like, who am I? And nothing was coming back. Um, So I really had to, you know, come to terms with figuring out, okay, who are you? And what is it that you want from your life? Like very early on, I kind of thought um, this is an opportunity to create the life that I want. Well, after I threw myself a big old pity party, let's get that out of the way. <laughs> let's be honest. Yes. <laughs> let's be honest. Okay. Um, and then eventually I, you know, after doing a lot of why me and looking around and comparing myself to everybody else going, why is everybody else has got their shit together and what's wrong with me? <laughs> um, I eventually got to the point where I was like, okay, you know, I can, I can create what I want to create here, but what the hell is it? <laughs> like that was the big question. I mean, talk about, um, a wake up call, right? Like we're talking, we're not just talking like one thing or a small thing. We're talking about like major life changes that yeah. ind- individually are a big deal, but it was like everything came to surface simultaneously for you. I mean, what, what was that like? Like, how did you, how did you work your way through that time period? Yeah, you know, um, you know that saying where it's like the universe gives you a whisper, then it gives you a nudge and Mm -hmm. gives you a shove. And then if you're not listening, it gives you the brick in the head. Um, I would be the brick in the head kind of person. Lots of bricks. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, now I come to look at this as being, um, it was necessary for it to happen the way that it happened because it was the way to get my attention. That it was like, okay, you're no longer on that path. You're on this other path here. So you need to figure this out. Because I can honestly say that, you know, had been left to my own devices, I probably would have never made that decision. Like I was very comfortable in my life, you know, Um, you know, I had a great job, like a great career, great perks. Um, But there was just like I said, there was some part that was kind of niggling at me. And, you know, having a stress related illness meant I basically had no energy to do anything. So I spent a lot of time in my bed, like I was forced into a place of stillness, really right? To contemplate the questions, which again, I'm a busy person. I'm an ambitious person. I never would have stopped long enough to figure out the answer had it not been forced upon me. Well, that's the thing. Like, I think half the battle is allowing yourself to be still. 
yeah allowing yourself the time to really process and go deeper and like look at things from a bird's eye view versus in the trenches of like knocking shit out and and being you know mm -hmm. superwoman productive every single day um yeah. you know it you have to slow down and look you're a testament if you do not slow down the universe will force you to if, <laughs> if this is truly your path and you're not listening <laughs> it yeah. will come to a point where you will you will be put you know in the chair in the bed and i'm not yeah. i'm not saying bad things on people but i'm just saying like if something is truly meant for you and you're not listening it will get your attention one way or the other well and that's the thing right like you know now i look back on it and i see like all along, I was getting these intuitive nudges that something was off, like something, you know, there was something more that I was supposed to be doing. But, you know, because I was very focused on kind of what was happening outside of me. So my career, you know, being a mother, being a wife, doing all the things right. I, I didn't, I didn't recognize it for what it was. And I also didn't trust it. Like mm -hmm. a lot of the conversation that would go in my head would be like, why do you feel like you need something more? You should be freaking grateful for what you have. Like you have a great job, a great family, a nice house. Like you travel all the time. Like people would kill for this. Like what's, what's wrong with you? And I literally just kept stuffing it back inside, like pushing it away. Um, now I see it as, and I'm very much in tune with the intuitive nudges that I need to go in a certain direction. But like I said, it had to hit me over the head long enough to stop me to say, okay, we're going to take away everything that's kept you busy and we're going to repoint you in a different direction. Yes. Well, I think you bring up such a really good point, honestly, about like, I should just be happy. Like people yeah. would, would kill to have this type of life. Like I literally have everything that there are so many beautiful people working that are working towards. Like why, why am I ungrateful? Exactly. Like, that's such a, such a, a heavy weight to carry is like, why can't I just be happy with what I have? Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, right? Like, because we are, you know, we live in a culture where the things that I had are the things that we are all striving for, right? Like I said, I worked my way out of the corporate environment. Like I did all the things, you know, I got to an executive position, but the thing was, I realized was nowhere along the way, did I actually check in with myself to say, Hey, is this what you wanted? Like, is this really making you happy? And, um, you know, like I was, you know, when I got there, I was kind of like, why did I never ask myself that question? But I didn't have the opportunity because well, I was doing what I thought everybody expected of me, right? Like your parents beat it into your head as a child, get a good job, you know, get a good pension, do all the things, stay with the company for many, many years. But I never checked in to see if that was really what was like soul filling for me. And that's such a, a humbling moment to, when you realize like, I, I'm allowed to ask myself, is this what I want? Yes. It's such a powerful shifting moment because it, it like very quickly pulls you up out and you start looking at things and like, it's all, it's like all of a sudden you can see again. Like it's so true. Yeah. And I think as women, you know, we are conditioned from a yet very young age to seek validation outside of ourselves. So our value is in, you know, what we do for other people, like in our careers, our families, um, you know, the way obviously our bodies look, um, all of that. And it's a lot of external validation. And as a result, like when we're so focused on that, we become very disconnected from ourselves. Like what's yes. important to us? What do we value? Well, it's, it's playing the should game. Right. You know, I should work my way up the corporate ladder. I should get married and have two children. I should have this type of house. Like, I don't know. There's just so many shoulds. It's like, okay, well, this is, this is kind of the direction of, of what people, you know, around my age are doing. So exactly. if I go off this path, then am I the weird one? Do I want something? Is that like unrealistic? Like, who am I to even think, you know, like all that mental chatter starts to come in. And I think it's seemingly easier to just keep doing the thing that you're doing because it feels easier when in, in turn, <laughs> like long-term it's, it's hard. That's very hard. Yeah, no. And you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, like staying on the easy path, like, cause having to face, you know, myself, like th that was incredibly uncomfortable. Right. And so it was just easy for me to stay busy and ignore it until I couldn't anymore. And like you said, you will always, it will always catch up with you at some point. Right. It sure will. Look, I, I'd be happy to share my version of the brick, <laughs> you know, yeah. 
building um, a successful branding agency, hiring employees like people told me that I should, um, doing you know making all the right connections, going to all the right networking events, and and buying the house and doing all the things, yet feeling completely overworked and honestly sometimes dead inside. Like how can I have all of these things and feel com so completely unfulfilled? And then things just like that whisper got really loud pretty quickly. Like things just started to turn yeah. and paychecks started bouncing and clients started leaving because, you know, they had everything that they need from us. You know, it wasn't like a bad thing was happening. It was just like, okay, we're, we're good and we're done. But it was like almost, it felt like a mass exit. And like, before right. I know it, like everything was chaotic. And then the pandemic hit. And I was forced to make a very hard but very necessary decision to lay off my entire staff and go home and work by myself in the basement for the next six months. Right. And and it was horrifying, like sitting with yourself and really feeling out and looking at yeah. everything from the past few years or decades. Like that's real work. Like that's that's a humbling <laughs> moment, but it's it's so beautiful because it's like a rebirth. Well, it really is a rebirth. And, you know, in the process of getting to know myself and, and it literally was like getting to know myself from, from day one, because I never really had a relationship with myself, which was the other thing that I recognized. Cause again, mm -hmm. I was so busy doing, you know, with all the expectations and obligations of life. And after a period of time, I was like, I kind of like this chick. She's cool. Right. She's cool. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. But I, before that I had literally no relationship with myself. You know, I mean, I'm just pausing for a second because I'm thinking how many women are nodding right now? Like, yeah. shit, when's the last time that I really got to know who I am? Truly yeah. who I am. Yeah. Not not the not the wife or spouse that I'm known as, not the business owner that I'm known as, not even the mother that I'm maybe known as. Like those are all portions of roles of your mm -hmm. life. But like you. Like yeah. before any of those things, you were you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that, that is so true. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, we, yeah, we carve out the time for all the other relationships in our lives, but we just mm -hmm. don't call it to carve out time for the relationship with ourselves. There's some, um, there's some really powerful work. If anyone wants to go down this road and I highly recommend it when you're ready is um, inner child healing. Mm. Like, cause I feel like yeah. so much of who we truly are yeah. is that inner child, right? Like yeah. the, the playfulness and the freedom and the creativity and like, just like the, the natural little spunk, like the, the natural little things that made you who you were when you were, you know, four five, six, seven years old, um, that, that still lives in you. Yeah. And when I found, when I embraced like my inner child as part of who I am as an adult, we're not two different people. Mm -hmm. Like she's always been in there. I just put all the shoulds on top of her and, and it got yeah. really heavy. Yeah, no, I 100% agree with you. Inner child work is powerful. And a lot of what I do, you know, when um, my clients who come to me and they're, you know, in the middle of their lives and they're feeling stuck about what they want to do next, I'm like, what did you dream about doing as a kid? Like, who were you as a child? Go back to that, that little girl because she has clues for you, right? She does. Like, yeah, and it's, you know, midlife is really... Um, about coming into the truth of who you are, like your most authentic self. So anything that is not serving your most authentic self will fall away and you will find yourself in this place where you have to come to terms with that part of you, yes. right? Which is scary and freaking beautiful all at the same time. <laughs> it is. It's quite a process. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, um, there's a, a, a quote uh, I can't remember who said it, but it's like letting go of who I am so that I can become who I might be. Mm. And that literally was for me, characterized my journey. It was like, I am not a wife. I am not a mother. <laughs> I am not a gym rat. I am not a corporate executive. Okay. So now who am I? But even letting go of those identities is very hard because like, that's how we're seen in the world. That's our value in the world, right? About what we do. It is. How did, so what is that, what was that like? Or what, what recommendations do you have when you're, when you are starting to ask yourself those questions, when you are um, opening up to, to finding out who you truly are at your core? Yeah. So two things I recommend, um, first of all, is to create space. Space was created for me, but I do not recommend that. <laughs> 
Um, so to create some space to be with yourself. So um, whether that's, you know, I, I always encourage people to start really, really small with this because it can feel seriously overwhelming if you've never done it before. But whether it's, you know, five minutes while you sip your coffee in the morning, staring out the window, whether it's a bubble bath or a walk in nature or whatever it is, create some space for yourself and protect that space with everything that you've got. It's for nobody else and nothing else other than, hi, Jen, how are you doing today? What do you need? Right. And start asking yourself the questions and start to listen to the little voice inside you. Right. Because it might be like, oh, I'm feeling really tired today. Like, you know, maybe we need to like cut back on the nine million things that we were going to do on the to to do list today. Right. But like asking ourselves this question, hi, how are you? What, what can I do for you today? What would you like? How's my body feeling? Right. And, you know, I also, I often encourage people, encourage people as well to journal about it because sometimes even just sitting and free writing, like just letting stuff come out, when you start putting it on paper, you're like, whoa, I did not know that was in there. <laughs> right. But like all those things, and they can be random thoughts, um, you know, it doesn't need to be, you know, eloquent prose, it can be like random thoughts that are popping up. But when you take them out of your head and put them on paper, they have a life of their own, and you can see them for what they are. Because in our heads, it's really busy and noisy. Well, it is in mine, and I'm assuming for a lot of us. Oh, oh yeah, I can, I can second that for many of us. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? So when we take it out of our head and we put it on paper... We can see it with a lot more objectivity. And, you know, the process of journaling has showed me things that, you know, like through free writing, even that I was like, whoa, hmm, who knew, right? But they're all clues um, to who you are. And then the other thing, the second thing that I encourage people to do is to follow your bliss, follow your joy. So like, what makes you really, really happy? Like, where do you feel like just, you know, like you're just bubbling over? What are you doing? Who are you with? Um, and to do more of that, because when you're in the state of joy, you are actually discovering more about who you are. So I started, for example, I've you know felt very called to go for these really short walks because that's all I could <laughs> manage at the time um, into the forest. And sometimes I couldn't walk very far and I would literally just sit at the base of a tree. But in the forest, it was like, oh, my God, this is so beautiful. And right. The more time that I spent there, the more I was like, oh, here's a clue about something that's, you know, making me really happy right now, bringing me joy. Like and in that process, like it's a, it's creating when you're in a state of joy, you're creating space for your intuition to actually speak to you. Mm. Right. Because when you're in a state of joy, your mind is relaxed. And now all of a sudden you can hear yes. whereas you didn't before. Yes. Yeah. It creates flow like a stream. Yes. Like I like I visualize a, a stream. And when exactly. there's a bunch of when there's a bunch of rocks in the way and they get piled up, like that stream gets disrupted. Exactly. But you start to move away some of those rocks and pebbles and boulders and that you get movement again. And yeah. that's where like amazing ideas come from and alignment happens and you're like yeah. you know you get this intuitive download like oh i should reach out to this person and then it ends up being yeah. like one of the most incredible incredible um you know relationships that you've ever had business wise or personal wise like it, yeah. it just it creates so much open white space exactly so like you, you get to create whatever you want with it Right. Exactly true. I mean, you know, I used to be the person who was like, you know, in the gym at 6am and then answering emails at 7am on my way to work on the train. You know what I mean? Like there was zero space. Now I'm the person who starts her day doing something she loves. Like I'm filling my cup before I do one ounce of work. Um, and sometimes it's going into the forest or, you know, like I grab my paddleboard and head to the lake, right? Because on the lake, I'm like, it's the most, the most joyous and the, where the best intuitive downloads come to me sitting mm. in the middle of the lake. And so now I know I have to prioritize those things above all else. The work will get done, right? But I prioritize filling myself up and, you know, creating that, that sense of flow and connection that we, you were just talking about before I do one stitch of work. Do you find that the work then is even easier? Oh, 100%. Like when you, when you carve in that time each day, when you have that intentional, quiet fulfillment time, like, yeah, uh, how does that affect the rest of your day and your work and your productivity and and even your finances? Well, so this is the thing, right? Like carving out that space, and you know, we've been conditioned to be like, oh, well, that's not productive time; it's not valuable, right? But carving out that space to kind of set your mind 
um, you know, to set your body and everything and, you know, create the intention for whatever it is that you want for that day, then allows the rest of the day to flow easily. Like I probably get more work done now, but in a much shorter space of time, and it feels very intentional. It's much more creative, right? Um, because I am, you know, carving out that time, you know, to set to set my day, basically, to set my mind, you know, to set my soul, to set my body, like everything in alignment with what it is that I'm looking to create. And like you said, the outflow from that is, you know, <laughs> amazing downloads, better finances, easier work, more productivity. Um, it's incredible. All A lot of the things, um, a lot of the reasons, rather, why so many women start a business in the first place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. is to have those things but it gets very it gets very full and very noisy and very loud very quickly yes well yeah I mean you know I you know when I started my business I approached it exactly as I did my corporate career and then found myself in a place where I was like okay this is not gonna work I need to figure out a different way to do things and like I said you know now my mornings are mine like completely mine <laughs> Right. I don't do any work before 10 o'clock. Like I spend three hours just like, you know, reading, you know, going into the forest, sometimes paddle boarding, like whatever it is I'm feeling called to that day. Um, you know, um, meditation, um, all of that to kind of set the stage for what it is that I'm going to do that day. I tell you what, undoing those old habits is no joke. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. Because like um I'm thinking like just the the hustle of like get up be here at a certain time rush out the door like that morning yeah. routine um really gets ingrained very deeply yes. and i even catch myself still now to this day every so often i'll feel like i need to hurry or rush or like yeah. oh like i'm missing out on something or like the world's gonna come to an end if laura's not you know in her email at 9 a.m and it's like whoa well, girl, all right, pause. Yeah. We, re we restructured so we don't have to be like this. This downtime, quiet time, totally normal. And mm -hmm. it's great for you. It's just as productive as like the busy work. It's it's good. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. I think we need to redefine what productivity looks like, right? Because in my mind, like money and hard work, like were, you know, in in inexplicably attached yes. right like if i wasn't sweating while i'm working then i you know the money wasn't going to come and pulling those two things apart like understanding that money can flow in from ease um you know and feel somewhat effortless less. i mean don't get me wrong we're, we're we're still working right but it feels relatively effortless for it to happen and this is where you know you mentioned the inner child work like i had to go back in and unpack why do i feel like i need to hustle for my worth like what is it like what got ingrained in me as a child that said, I need to earn, right? Because that was the thing, you had to earn it. Hard work was the way that it was done, right? Um, so it really does require you, like undoing those patterns requires you to understand why you have those patterns in the first place, right? And hustling for your worth for me was like a huge one. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's such a great point. It's like, it, it's, um, it's almost like, you know, pinpointing the, the cause of an illness, right? Like there might right. be all these symptoms, but like what's causing it? Like there, there was a pivotal time in your, in your life. There was something that somebody said to you that got, you know, embedded yeah. in your brain. There was an experience that you were part of. Like yeah. oftentimes the things that we're playing out now are direct reflections of moments like that. Exactly. Exactly. I love how Jennifer is talking about you're never too old, right? Like, I think sometimes, a lot of times, we start to put ourselves in this bracket where like, oh, I'm too old to do this, or oh, I'm behind in where I'm at in my life and in my business. And we just discount ourselves, right? Like, you just write yourself off as if like, okay, the time has passed and now I can no longer. Hello, that's a limiting belief, my friend. And it's one of the things that keep really incredible fucking women from doing the things that they were put on this earth to do. One of my favorite things to do as your coach is to help recognize where those limiting beliefs are. Energetically, I can feel you before you even say a word. I have struggled, struggled. I've ridden, I drove the struggle bus of limiting beliefs all the way down to, oh, well, your intuitive abilities in coaching is not enough. 
you need to have a certification or a process or a system or someone else's framework to go off of for it to be enough. My friend, my intuition is my secret fucking sauce. It's one of the ways that I help guide you and empower you the most. And regardless of how long we're together, whether it's through a 90 minute alignment session or through an ongoing coaching program, that shit shows up. And for the better, because if you are willing, if you are open to change, you know inside your body, you know that something is calling you. You know that there is a version of you that is like screaming to come out. You're like a firework inside of a fucking box. I can promise you that if you say yes to yourself, if you open yourself up to change, you are receptive and willing to try new things and you're willing to implement, meaning you are taking grounded, practical, aligned action. You will absolutely, without a doubt, start to feel the way that you want to feel, start to see the success that you are striving for, and live in the ease and simplicity that your soul is craving. You can save $350 off of your 90-minute alignment session if you book before, on or before December 16th at lauraora.com. And if you're not sure where to start or what program might be best for you, you can book a discovery call and we'll go from there. All right, back into the second half of this episode with Jennifer Arthurton about creating your kick-ass next chapter. So thoughts on the, the inner dialogue of, okay, I'm hearing this voice. Mm-hmm. I want to make this change, or I think I might want to make yeah. this change, but I've been doing this for so long. I've, I've, I've built this amazing career. I've already invested X amount of dollars in this one thing. Like it, now it's crazy. Like now I just feel irresponsible. That this is probably one of the conversations I have most often because, and this was the same thing for me, right? Like we've invested a lot to get to where we are. And so the idea of like, okay, I'm going to start over and throw all this away is like, it's scary, right? It's really, really scary. And the number one thing I say to people, first of all, is even if you decide you're going to quit your job, you are not starting over from scratch. You are starting over from experience, right? And your life has set you up perfectly for where you need to go next. Like all of the skills and experience and, you know, wisdom that you have is exactly what you need for the next chapter. So you're not starting over. And then the second thing is, you know, we tend to have an all or nothing attitude. I'm either doing this or I'm doing that. When the reality is most big life changes happen in tiny little increments. And so rather than, you know, needing to take massive leaps and bounds towards the thing that you want, how can you start really, really small? Like what's the tiniest step that you can take in that direction right now? Right. And then over time, you know, one tiny step leads to another tiny step, which, you know, might lead to a leap in the future. But you're kind of a little bit hacking the fear mechanism in your brain when you take the tiny step as opposed to the big leap. So the way to start and, you know, I often have people who start with these tiny steps and then they're like, wow, I did these three things. And then, boom, this massive thing happened. And, you know, I'm on my way kind of thing. Um, And so like really just making it feel small and manageable to start, like just to get you in momentum um, is absolutely key. Yes. Little bits at a time make such yeah. a big difference because gosh, our brains just want to immediately go to like, I need to, I need to know all the pieces. I need to know the hows. I need <laughs> to know how much money I need to know exact timelines. Like I need details. <laughs> right. When in reality, that's just, it's just not it's just not real, right? Like it's it's right. setting yourself up for failure, in my opinion, because it's, it's, it, that's a big stress. And when you're so worried, when you're like going into this thing already starting tense and tight and worried and like your energy is blah, it, that's, that's going to be your new association with how this journey is going to go. Whereas like the reality is like, we're, we're making little shifts, right? If you're starting a business, yeah. you're registering an LLC. Right. You're not build, building a website and going to the biggest conference in the world next week because right. you're starting the business. Right. Yeah, no, that that is so true. And 
you know, I think when we think about that in the all or nothing approach, we also tend to go to the, well, I'm not enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm too old. I don't have enough time. Right. And all of those things that start popping up as well, all of those fears and limiting beliefs come to the surface. Whereas when you're taking the tiny little step, you're like, okay, I am not too old to be able to go research this thing or to make a phone call or, you know, to, to fill out a form. Like I'm not too old to do that. Right. So again, it's just like, you can, increment your way into the thing that you want. Yes. You teach so many beautiful women about how to get unstuck. Yeah. What does stuck often look like or feel mm. like? So many of my clients come to me um, with this sense of, I can't keep doing what I'm doing. I know I want something different for my life, but I have no idea what it is or how to get there. And often by the time they come to me, they've been in this um, spin cycle of, you know, just like we talked about is like, well, my life is great. I should be so grateful, but I want more, but you know, I don't know what that is, but I should be grateful. And literally they've been spinning in this circle for so long that it's actually like physically and energetically wearing them out. Like they, they, they don't have the energy that they need to even find the clarity right? Because they're stuck in the spin cycle. They're lying in bed at night thinking, okay, what, like, is this really my life? Like, I, I don't want to keep doing it this way. Like, what else is there? Right? And this is like the, the, the thought pattern that is permeating every part of their day. Yes. And <laughs> the first thing I say to people, you know, just like we talked about is, first of all, stop doing what you are doing, like literally stop. And I don't mean you know, stop everything and lie on the couch and watch reruns of Downton Abbey for, for three days. I mean, just carve out some time to stop. Like we said, whether five minutes is available to you or 10 minutes or whether it's 30 minutes or an hour, like whatever it is, carve out some time to just be still for a second, like to quiet your mind so that some of those thoughts can settle. Yes. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, the next thing I tell people is, you know, check your stories because the next thing that happens is, you know, they go through this process of journaling or doing whatever. And they're like, oh, you know what? I've always wanted to do X. And then the immediate next thought is, well, I can't do that because I got no experience. I'm too old. I'm too, I'm not pretty enough. I'm not enough, like whatever it is. And I, you know, I ask them to challenge their stories. Like what are those things that you think are truths about you, but you really don't have the proof for like, where is the proof for that thing? And how can you challenge that thought a little bit, right? So, you know, the idea of I'm not good at math, like I suck at finances. Well, maybe you just haven't been taught properly, right? Like maybe it's something that you can learn. But like we tend to, you know, again, create these labels for ourselves and create these stories about ourselves, you know, either based on, you know, like you said, an experience that we had, something somebody said to us you know, something our parents did, like whatever it is. And we need to challenge those stories because we are so much more capable than we think we are so much more. Like I have watched women uh, just like, you know, expand out of their perceived box and create amazing things in the world, literally by challenging their stories. The stories, those narratives, those words, wow. that inner voice, man, she yeah. can get nasty. <laughs> really nasty. Yeah, she exactly. She can get really nasty. But I think that there's um, comfort in knowing that that's not your voice. Right. And that's the other part is, right? It's not the truth. It's a voice trying to keep you safe in your little box, <laughs> but it's not true. None of it is true. Do you find that when the women that you're working with get like a little bit of taste of mm. that passion or that thing that they've always wanted to do, mm. do they go from like walking to running? Like I just envision yeah. them being like, oh, that's what it feels like. Yeah. Hold my beer. <laughs> that That is literally it. It's like, you know, when they come to this place where like one of the things I encourage people to do as well as to visualization or daydreaming, like creating, like, what is that thing that you've always wanted? Like it's been in the back of your head, but you won't let yourself entertain it. Cause it seems like ridiculous, like so silly. And then just play with that for a little bit. Like, you know, allow it to expand. Like, what does it look like? What are you doing? Who are you talking to? You know, like, how are you feeling? And really just to kind of play with that. And as I watch women kind of play with these things that are eventually like, and sometimes it's things that they've never ever vocalized to a single solitary human being. It's just kind of in the back of their heads. Right. Um, 
as they start playing with this idea and it starts to become more real in their minds, you can feel their and see their passion building. And there is nothing, nothing like the feeling of being connected with something that you're passionate about. Like yes. it's, it's literally like, it's like a, ro- it's like rocket fuel. <laughs> it, it is an energy of its own. That's for sure. It is. It is. Right. So as I, you know, watch women come into this clarity about like, this is the thing and like, oh, there's even a possibility that I could make this thing real. Like it's, it's so freaking beautiful to watch. So beautiful to watch. Like um, I run a mastermind as well too, where I'm a huge believer in the power of community yes. um, for accountability and support. And I remember this one woman who, you know, had this desire to create a, a charity and, you know, she came to the group and she's like, you know, I've had this idea, but it's so silly. And, you know, like, you know, who, who would ever want to be part of this and yada, yada, yada. So she shares this idea with the group. And by the time she's done sharing her idea, like the whole group is in tears. Like I'm in tears. They're all in tears. And we are like going, oh my goodness, that is so beautiful. And then she was able to see it through our eyes. Like it was the first time she had actually ever vocalized it. Right. And she saw people's reaction and that in itself was enough to fuel her in the direction she wanted to go. Gosh, that's so powerful. I mean, that's, you mentioned the power of community. Look, Mm -hmm. when you can be with like-minded that are on the same energy wavelengths, I mean, that's, that is also indescribable. Like people that truly, truly are there to support you and cheer you on and be an ear or be a shoulder or, you know, to challenge you, you know, all of these Mm. things. It's like, there's, you know, friends and family serve a a beautiful role in your life, right? They fulfill things that no one else can. And on the flip side, especially as you are building a business, that's a whole different world. And so surround yourself with like-minded people that like truly get who you are and what keeps you up at night and what lights you up and, and they can see those things in you. Like that's, yeah, that's, it's everything. It, it, you can't even put a price tag on it sometimes. No, it's so powerful. Like I can honestly say that I would not be where I am on my journey had it not been for that, for that very thing. Like, you know, having somebody else to hold my belief for me on the days that I'm struggling and then, yes. you know, give it back to me is incredibly powerful, it's right? Because so you're not giving it up. It's just like, I just need you to hold this for me because I'm struggling over here. I'm in the pits, <laughs> right? And, you know, again, then, then they reflect back to you what they, what, what they see. And it's uh, 99.9% of the time, it's something completely different than what's going on in your own head. Like, you know, the I suck, I can't do this times. And they're like, man, we think you're really kicking ass over here. <laughs> Yeah. Isn't that funny too? Like, I mean, funny, not funny, but, um, you know, when we're having these like, woe is me, I suck, nothing I do matters moments. Mm. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I, when I have those moments, those will be the days that I get like random ass text messages from somebody or a random email or a random DM. And let's, I mean, let's be honest, the universe doesn't work in random ways. Um, but it'll be like, you, you have no idea how much you inspire me. And that thing that you wrote kept me going today. And you're just like, what? Like, it's so, it's such a yin and yang. Like sometimes I'm just like, I don't understand, but okay. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, like you said, it's like, you know, the universe doesn't, is not random. And when you're on your path and you know, do you know how many times along the way I'm like, okay, that's it. I quit. And I would say to myself, okay, you can quit. And then five minutes later, I'm like, no, no, you can't. You're going to figure this out. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right. Because, and like you said, it would be the result of like, somebody said something, an opportunity pops up or whatever. And you're like, okay, we can figure this out. We can totally figure this out. I'm not quitting after all. Okay. Universe. (laughs) Yes. I mean, honestly, sometimes we just need a breather. Yeah. Like you mentioned, like walk outside and stand in the sunshine for five minutes. Yeah, exactly. Put down your electronics and go lay in your bed for 10 minutes, like just space. I think so it's so underrated. Like (laughs) it's really so valuable. Like, or if you're trying to, you know, you're trying to write content and it's just not flowing or you're trying to make TikTok videos and it's just not working, or you're trying to, you know, make connections or whatever it is you're trying to do. And you're just like, I'm beating my head up against the wall. I promise you, if you take a five or 10 minute break and you come back to it, that shit will be flowing. 
I, I literally had that experience yesterday where I was like, I've been working on something all morning. It just totally wasn't coming together. I'm like, okay, let's take the dog for a walk. And I, and I wrote the whole thing on the dog walk. See? Right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because you stopped trying and it's that energy of, you know, when you let go, like when you're in that space and it's like you're fighting and you're struggling, the energy of struggle just creates more struggle. Right. Mm-hmm. And there I am out in the middle of the forest with the dog. And I'm like, the whole thing just was like, boom, 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 boom. And 15 minutes later, it was done. Right. It just lands. I mean, yeah. if, if you're one of those people that gets ideas in the shower, I mean, th- there's a prime example. Like you are, yeah. you are not distracted. There's no technology in there. You're not having to do anything or be anywhere. You're just being. Yeah. Downloads and, happen very rapidly. Yeah. I mean, we, c- I cannot, um, overstate the importance of being like really being with yourself, like being in, like being in your surroundings, like being present, right? It's because those times when you're in presence is when you, like you said, the the major downloads are going to happen. The ideas are going to flow. The solution to the problem that you've been struggling with will automatically appear. Yes. And that's where ease is when you stop trying to force things to happen. Exactly. That's that's nice. Yes. Take a nice big deep breath, step away for a hot second and allow flow to do what it's trying to do, but you're trying to force it, whether it's with time or energy or a lot of times it's time, right? Like, let's be honest. I'm trying to force this to happen in this time frame that I have created in my brain. (laughs) Exactly. A lot of our own, a lot of expectations that we carry are our own. 100%. 100%. And we are so hard on ourselves. (laughs) Yes. And yeah. back to, back to that, that little taste that your clients get, mm-hmm. I, I'm just envisioning like, you know, the, the hardest part is, is allowing, right. Letting go, um, taking that kind of first baby step. But once you get a taste of what your own personal alignment feels like, mm. oh my gosh, guys, like I, I want that for every single one of you listening right now. I yeah. want you to taste what your own alignment feels like because it's it's like you stepped into another universe. Yeah. <laughs> like the your happiness, your joy, the ease of things, like your body stops flaring up. I mean that we could talk about that in a whole nother episode. Like, you know, your your body settles down and your anxiety decreases and like you're smiling more and and money starts flowing like super easily and like it's just it's so hard to explain, but man, I promise you, if you get a taste of that, it's, it's everything. Yeah. I, I, I can't, yeah, I a hundred percent agree with you on that one, like coming into your own alignment. And now, now I look back at my own journey and I realize a huge part of why I was burnt out was like, I, I was having physical symptoms of a misalignment, like energetically. Right. Mm -hmm. And as I started to come back into alignment, like with who I truly am and like living my truth, right? Not what other people think I should do or, you know, like what was expected of me, but like living my truth, all of a sudden my body started to heal in ways that happened so quickly. Well, I mean, it was, it was a bit of a process, but the doors opened and the path became easy. It still took time, but the path became easier because I was living in that truth. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at your, your amazing story. You were, you were in bed, from stress-related illnesses, not able to physically move, to now spending a few hours every morning potentially paddleboarding or taking a hike yeah. or a walk. Like that's that's no coincidence. That, I mean, that that's incredible. Like you literally took back your own power physically and are able to do things that you enjoy, which then fuels all the other things that you love to do. You know, um, <laughs> as part of my story, you know, like when I was you know, when everything had kind of fallen away and, you know, I was sick in bed for some reason, I still thought that I could work out. Like I could go to the gym. Um, and I had a trainer and one day I walked into the gym and she, she fired me as a client. She said, your body is clearly talking to you and you are not listening and Mm. I will not participate in this anymore. But this was me trying to hang on to like, with tooth and nail, everything that I had, right. It's like, okay, I can hang on to this one thing. I can still do it. I'm not sleeping at light at night. I have no energy, but for whatever reason you can go to the gym. Okay. Well, I'm just going to take it easy. Right. And when she fired me was like 
the final, first I was like, so angry, like, I'm like, who the hell do you think you are? Yada, yada, yada. And, um, after about a week of being so pissed off at her, I was just like, Oh my God, like, look at me trying to hang on to this thing that is clearly telling me (laughs) it's not the way to be right. But I am still trying to hang on to it. And that was the very particular moment where I surrendered it all. And I was just like, okay, universe, if this is not, if this is not it, you need to show me the way, like you need to lay out the path for me because I am obviously not capable of doing this myself. Right. And then that's when I felt called to go into the forest and within the forest, I felt called to write, you know, my writing turned into the first blog post and it literally went from there, which turned into the podcast. But I literally was like, okay, I'm going to follow you know, the guidance of the universe. I was like, universe, make it easy. Like, cause I obviously yes. I'm not smart. I'm like, make it easy. <laughs> right? Turns and, out I might be overthinking this. So I need a little bit of guidance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Um, and, and, and that's the hardest part is just the surrendering into, you know, because we fear the unknown more than we fear the known, even if we hate the known right? Like we think that yes. unknown is always going to be a hundred times worse than where we are now, even if we're not happy where we are now. And, you know, that was the point where I was like, okay, I'm literally just going to have to be in full surrender and trust that whatever is going to happen is going to happen for me. What an incredible gift from the universe. Your, really tra- your, your trainer was <laughs> honestly, like, I know in the moment you were like, what the fuck, but, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, that, that again, no coincidence. Like it, it took someone outside of you yeah. to help, to help guide you. And what, what an amazing blessing that experience was that led you and then incredible kudos to you, right? Like we can, we can give a lot of praise to the universe, but ultimately you made the decision, right? Like it came yeah. down to you. You chose to surrender. You chose to follow the first step. You chose to write the first blog post like you you like picked up the breadcrumbs along the way and that's that's something to celebrate because you listened and you ultimately got yourself to the place that you truly wanted to be yeah And, and you know that that is very true I mean we have so much choice along the way um and choosing trust even though it's really really scary Um, you know, and, and again, you know, like my journey wasn't smooth and I, you know, I hate to, for people to think that it was just kind of like this, you know, there was one point where I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. And I went and got a new corporate job, you know, as vice president of this company and four months into it, I was like, oh shit, (laughs) Like, like this is not it. Okay. But I needed to almost go back there just to remind myself, okay, this is not it. And then, you know, like, it was like, I had to quit and be like, okay, here we go. So we have to trust ourselves, right? And even when it feels really scary, um, you know, even when we're unsure, like, we just have to somehow find, you know, that tiny shard of trust and belief that we're on the right path. I and we'll that. make mistakes. And this is the other part. We'll make mistakes and we'll be, we need to be super compassionate with ourselves. And then we just, you know, dust ourselves off and keep going. Cause it's yeah. not, I, I like, I don't want anybody to walk away with the impression that it's like this very smooth road. Like it. Oh no. Hard. Yeah. No, I, I don't think that that, that no one's thinking that because everyone's just <laughs> thinking, okay, I hear, I hear someone that's walked a path ahead of me and there has been challenges and like, has been bedridden and like, you know, has gone through all these major life changes, but ultimately listen to herself. And here's living proof that this can happen. And that's incredibly powerful. How, how do we honor the chapter that we're in while also creating our kick-ass next chapter? Mm, What a beautiful question. Um, I think one of the things that you know, is also a really important practice is just being hugely grateful for where we are and everything that brought us to this point that is now allowing us to go to the next one. So finding gratitude in, you know, the smallest things of where we are, again, puts you in that state of uh, joy, um, of pleasure, like the vibration of gratitude is really powerful because then like we can be grateful for where we are and also be looking forward. Like they're not mutually exclusive, they're right? Not, they're not mutually excu- exclusive. You're right. 
Right. And, you know, we are creating every future moment is being created from the moment that we are in. And so if the moment that we are in is all about, you know, chaos and stress, the next moment that we're creating is going to be based on chaos and stress. If we're, you know, creating the next moment from a place of gratitude, and like some days gratitude might be difficult, right? It's like, I'm loving my coffee this morning, or, you know, I got out of the house five minutes earlier than I did than I normally do, like whatever it is, find the gratitude and the joy in what, where you are, because the next moment is being created from that one. Oh my gosh. All right. Total side note to my team. That is the clip. That's the wave clip right there. <laughs> that statement. <laughs> so Rosa and Josh, please make sure that that is the clip that we put in the social media share. That was, oh my gosh. I need a second. That was beautiful. <laughs> you know, that might be one of the most powerful things I think I've heard in a very long time because tomorrow doesn't exist. Yesterday mm -hmm. is already done. Right. Yeah. And every step that we take, we are building the next step. And so being grateful for the, the moment that we are in being mm -hmm. grateful for what we've already worked for that we now obtain and knowing that we have, we have the power to continue to create more things that we love. Yeah. Exactly. And then the other thing that I would say to that as well, too, is, you know, if, you know, where you are has, you know, resulted in endings or closures or whatever, allow yourself to grieve that too. Like there is a really, it's really important to get the full closure by grieving the things that you, that you had. Right. So for me, finding myself divorced, unemployed, right. I tried to push through without, okay, it's like, okay, that stuff's over, tie it up in a nice little bow, put it on the shelf, move on. Um, yeah, no, it doesn't quite work that way. And then, you know, like I had to kind of stop and like allow myself to grieve everything that was and be grateful for all of the lessons and, you know, tools and resources that I collected in the process of all of those things. And then that allowed me the energy and the wisdom and, you know, the intuitive connection to be able to move forward. Because if you don't have closure of the past, you can't create the future, right? Because it's just hanging over your head. So, you know, allowing yourself to grieve, be grateful for everything that you got from it, and then create the next moment. Such a powerful reminder. My mm -hmm. goodness, you are just full of amazingness. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. As we start to round things out, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of our listeners are beautiful souls. 20s, 30s, 40 year olds that are building businesses, mm -hmm. running lives. What really matters and what can they let go of? Mm. I think letting go of um, external expectation, um, you know, other people's ideas of who you are or what you should be or what you should be doing, like letting go of those things and operating from a place that feels really true to you. You know, like, especially in business, there is a thousand strategies to get from here to there. Right. And it's so easy for us to, you know, go out and buy the course or, you know, get the coach to learn the strategy. But if the strategy is not a hundred percent aligned with who you are and your truth, chances are it's not going to be easy. It's not going to work as well as it might for somebody else who it is aligned for. And so trusting yourself um, to know what feels in alignment and to know what that alignment feels like is, I think, probably the most important thing. Um, and you know, like honoring the way that you work. Like, I'm not sure if anybody listening is familiar with human design. Oh, yes. Right. But like, you know, understanding your human design and understanding how you naturally operate gives you so much freedom now to pick and choose the things that make sense for you and ultimately just makes everything easier, it right? So because does. like, you know, when we're like, well, I should be doing this and I should be doing that, but I can't. And, you know, like, again, we're creating that energy of like a lot of stress for ourselves, right? And giving ourselves a permission to be ourselves exactly as we are and to do the things that feel, you know, inherently right for us, I think is probably one of the most important things that we can learn because there's a million roads to get to the same destination and we don't have to follow anybody else's or anybody else's expectations. Um, yes. of us. The way that 
you work is not the same way that anyone else works and that's yeah. okay like i that that probably took me longer than i'd care to ad- like to admit to admit <laughs> to figure you, out you and me both you and me yeah. both <laughs> but um but man when you figure out like okay well okay so i'm a projector i have to know what is your design i'm a manifesting generator okay so we worked we worked almost polar opposite yeah. like yeah and that's okay like that's the mm. most that's one of the coolest things about it is like if I'm not working the way that you work, it doesn't mean that I'm failing and vice versa. Right. right. If, you're, if you're not working the way that I work, it doesn't mean that you're behind or, you know, like you should be doing more or less. Like we yeah. all work so uniquely different that when you learn these things about yourself, these are tools in the, in the toolkit, right? Gosh, you can open up so much. Like human oh. design has taught me so much about myself that I didn't know. <laughs> oh, so, so much. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, amazing stuff, Jennifer. I feel like we could we could talk for another three days about so many amazing things. <laughs> amazing, we absolutely could. <laughs> amazing synergy. Honestly, this is one of the reasons that I love this fucking podcast the most is connecting with incredible souls like you because it's just it's it's amazing. There's so many people out there in the world, and and, and especially as an entrepreneur, it's so easy to get caught up in our little corner, our little tiny, mm. tiny, tiny corner, yeah. and feel alone and overwhelmed, and I'm the only one, and I'm not doing this right, and I'm behind, and I'm fat, and I'm skinny, and like all of these things, and it's, it's coming out of that, and yeah. being in the community, and being with like-minded people, and really, really honoring your own self-expression, that everything that we talked about today gets to come to life. Yeah, that is so true because like society wants us to fit into a box and we all need to fit into the same box. And if you have a corporate background, you know, that's true. Like everybody's supposed to fit into the exact same box and having the freedom to create your own. is just incredibly beautiful. Yes, it sure is. I want to make sure that everyone knows where to find you. So tell us a little bit about um, your website, social media, any special offers that you'd like to offer. Give us all the goods. Yeah. So uh, I am on at Old Chicks No Shit on Facebook, on Instagram is probably where I hang out the most. Uh, my website is oldchicksnoshit.com. The podcast is Old Chicks No Shit, in case you haven't already got that. <laughs> Um, and I also run a mastermind, uh, for women who are, um, reinventing themselves or some portion of their lives, um, a small intimate mastermind group where we come together and, um, we navigate the path together while we support each other. Um, so yeah, that is, uh, runs all the time. It's an evergreen program. So people can join in whenever they like. And, um, yeah. Wonderful. I, my branding heart is so happy that you have such consistency across your naming. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really funny because old chicks no shit actually came from like very, very early on in my corporate career. Um, like I was probably in my twenties at that point where, you know, when a new person would join the team, we'd be like, Hey, follow us old chicks. Cause we know, we know what's up. Right. And then, you know, when I got to be 50 and it landed in a whole other different way for me at that point, it just was like so perfectly aligned. <laughs> oh, isn't that amazing? That, that little seed planted and 20, grew, in, yeah. <laughs> grew into something incredible. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Well, I will make sure that we have all of the links that you just mentioned in the show notes today. And I cannot wait to hear your answer to this. What does the word gutsy mean to you? Mm, what does the word gutsy? Well, okay. The word gutsy for me, when you say gutsy, it immediately uh, pulls me to my solar plexus and like the seat of my intuition, mm. right? And so having, being able to trust my gut for me is like, because sometimes your gut is going to lead you in places that is, goes against the conventional wisdom on things, <laughs> right? And having the courage to be able to follow that. Um, I think is incredibly gutsy, like literally and figuratively <laughs> gutsy. Yes, it's all it's all in the same area. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Amazing. Jennifer, I can't thank you enough. Your energy is incredible. Your wisdom is powerful. Um, I think that you're setting such an incredible example to so many women. So thank you. Thank you for sharing your time with me today. Thank you so much for having me. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's truly been a pleasure. Look, that episode had an energy of its own. I don't know if you guys are feeling it, but I am still riding the high of Jennifer's amazing energy and her reminders to us that we are way, way more capable than we give ourselves credit for. 
And so this Thursday, we're going to spend a few minutes undoing the thought that I've always done it this way, but I've always. Look, I don't care if you have done something every single day your entire life. If you come to me in this moment and you say, that thing doesn't make me happy anymore, I'm going to encourage you to let go of it or restructure it or reinvent it. Look, you are not trapped into anything. You get to choose what your life, what your business, what your energy, what all those things do, what they look like and what they feel like. If you say to yourself often, but I've always, look, this Thursday's Power Back session is going to be for you. Until then, connect with me on TikTok and Instagram using at that Laura Aura. And as always, until I see you next time, stay gutsy.